Hello, hello. Check one, two. Can everybody hear me and see me? Oh, I'm muted. Okay. Can you guys see me and hear me now? I don't stream often enough, do I? I get rusty and forget what the heck I'm doing. So, let's see here. Do, do, do. All right. So, today is going to be a fun stream. I have my adult beverage ready because we're going to have a good time. As you guys might know, my Twitter, it tends to cause kerfuffles from time to time, <laughs> which is fine with me. As you guys know, I'm not like, um, you know, conflict avoidant. I'm not opposed to a little adversity. That's all fine with me. Um, and Twitter, I kind of see it as, you know, uh, a little bit of a social experiment, if that makes sense. Like, it's interesting to put what you think out there and then see how people respond. It's interesting to ask questions or do a poll and see what people say, things like that. So um, I do get myself into plenty of trouble on Twitter. And there's a whole bunch of people that misrepresent what I say, apparently have reading comprehension problems and want to pretend I said something I didn't and things like that. So I thought, let's do a stream where we address all this stuff. Let's go over some of the things people accuse me of, some of the straw men that they're arguing, and, and, you know, just talk about that. So one tweet that kind of took off that I did, um, I'm going to just read them from my phone. I thought about doing screen share, but I don't want to, like, accidentally share something I shouldn't, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to read them. If you want to see these tweets, they're right on my timeline. Uh, my Twitter is at rach for patriarchy It's in the link tree that will be in the description box when this is done, but it's at Rach, R-A-C-H, the number four, the word patriarchy. That's my Twitter. Um, <laughs> this particular tweet got 73.4 thousand views. It had 61 quote tweets, you guys. So people had a lot to say about this. Um, the tweet reads like this. On husband and wives both voting, why would a man want to marry a woman who is going to continually be opposing him? Why should women have equal say in how the country is run when they do not take equal responsibility for building, maintaining, or defending it? Those are the three key words, okay? So try to keep this in mind when we're talking about the dum-dums who don't have reading comprehension. I said, again, why should women have equal say in how the country is run when they do not take equal responsibility for building, building the infrastructure, building the borders, building the government, men built the country, women didn't build the country, maintaining it, the men are the ones maintaining the roads, keeping things from falling apart and collapsing, keeping the plumbing going and the lights on, that's men, okay, and defending it. So when you think about those things, I'm not talking about uh, contributions women make in an indirect way to society or uh, nice things women do that are helpful to the country. That's not what I mean. I'm specifically saying build, maintain, defend. Are there women in the armed forces? Yes. Are any of them on the front lines uh, or doing Green Beret stuff, Navy SEAL stuff? No, not really. Uh, there's never been a woman past the Navy SEAL test, even though it's been open to them for, I think, over a decade, maybe longer. Um, I'm pretty sure they opened that up at least like when Andrew and I were dating. So maybe 16, 17 years. It's been a while. No female Navy SEALs. Very few. They make up less than 10% of all special ops. And even in special ops, they're usually in a supportive role. They're like running a computer or, you know, doing something like that. They're not being dropped from helicopters, SEAL Team 6 style to go in and take out the bad guys or whatever, right? We just, that's not the function of women. It never historically has been, and it still isn't. Even though technically they're allowed, very few women on the front line. When, when shit goes sideways, nobody calls the women to come and fix it. That's them's facts, everybody. Okay, so given that, <laughs> here are the some of the quote tweets that that win some awards, uh, in my view, uh, people who read my tweet. And this is the thing about what I say. I know that most of what I say goes against everyone's programming, right? 
it goes against what they know to be true based on what they've been told their whole life. Uh, you know, the things that are repeated in the culture and in the propaganda and TV shows, movies, music, everything we've been hearing for 50 years. Women are strong. Women can do anything men can do. Women and men are equal. Like everybody knows what the propaganda is. So I understand and expect that when I say these things, there's going to be some backlash and that's fine. However, let's take issue with some of these things because people aren't being specific and they're not listening and they're not actually responding to what I'm saying. They're responding to what I, they think I'm saying. So, um, the first quote tweet, uh, Madison Hatter, she says, traditionalism is so toxic. Okay. Uh, the next one, this is so funny. The next one, here's where we get into it. If all women stopped working, domestic labor and workforce labor, watch your country collapse. Women help the world go round. To say their contribution does not assist the country is denying they have worthy contributions. So here we go with the first straw man. I didn't say women don't contribute anything to society. I didn't say women don't do important things. I didn't say women aren't helpful or any of that. That's not what I said, right? I already explained to you guys, I said, build, maintain, defend, but everybody, for some reason, heard women don't do shit or women ain't shit, right? So like, they just come at me with stuff that I'm not even saying. So the next one, women give birth to future generations. We teach, we console, we heal, but we shouldn't be able to vote because we don't contribute enough to society. I'm not a feminist, but Jesus, Edge Christ, what is this fuckery? Okay. Well, here's what the fuckery is, Leanne the Great. The fuckery is that uh, if we're going, men are the ones that put their lives on the line. They do all the dirty and dangerous jobs. If you look at the top 20 dangerous jobs that are required to keep modern society running, men do those. It's like 85% plus men doing things like lumber work, construction, um, oil rig work, power line men, uh, nuclear plant workers, wastewater treatment, garbage collectors, infrastructure jobs that give you this modern world that makes you think that you're equal with men, that you're the same as a man. Everybody remembers my debate with Nina, right? You all remember Nina telling me women are going to go out in the power and in the ice storm and get the power back up. Women are going to come in after the hurricane and rescue people from the floods. Women are going to climb the burning building and save all the children. Uh, no, you are all deluded. You are all insane. And you think that women think that. Why do they think that? Well, they think that because they get up in the morning and their cell phone alarm goes off to wake them up. A cell phone that was built and designed by a man. Uh, are there women in the Apple factory who probably like put the little parts together? Yeah. But that's not that's not who designs the technology, who got the satellites up, who puts up cell phone towers. That's another extremely dangerous job. Cell towers, really dangerous work. All men doing that. There aren't women. There aren't little five foot two women climbing the cell towers, building the cell towers, keeping satellites working. Sorry, that's like probably 90 percent plus men. So her phone wakes her up. She turns on her lights which are, you know, the wiring in her house was installed by a man. The power lines outside that go to her house are put up and maintained by a man. If they go down, a man comes to fix it. She gets ready, uses her indoor plumbing, also done by a man. Also, if she calls a plumber, a man's going to show up if her toilet clogs. So she gets ready in her bathroom, takes her shower made by men. Then she, um, cooks her breakfast on a stove that was built and installed by a man. The, the movers who brought the stove into the house are men, right? Um, the pots and pans she's using, probably made by men or designed by men. Uh, the food she's eating, probably raised and grown by men, farmers who are men. Uh, I grew up in farm country, guys. There's a, Women do some farm labor, but we're talking like the difficult stuff, like driving the big heavy combines, hay, hay bales. The smaller bales of hay weigh over 100 pounds. I actually did hay bale work one summer as a teenager because I'm abnormally strong for a girl. And I could do it, but it was really hard. And I was one of the only women who tried to do it. And you get scratched up and you're sweating. It's like hard, difficult work. 
So all of this food, her eggs, her bacon, her whatever she's eating, her vegan omelet, it comes from like men who made the food, drove the trucks to get the food to the store, uh, you know, stack the shelves, drive the high lows in the grocery store and the d- distribution center for all this stuff, all this infrastructure that gives her this modern life made by men. She gets in her car. Her car is designed by an engineer who's a man. It's built in a plant by male workers. There might be a few ladies on the assembly line putting some screws and packs and stuff like that, but her car is there because a man made cars. Uh, also inventing totally male dominated, very few female inventors. So she gets in her car, turns on the car AC made by a man. If her car AC were to go out or her engine were to stop working, she'd take it to a a car place. The man's going to fix it. She drives to her office, which was built by a man on roads that were built by men. It's men filling the potholes in the hundred degree weather on that hot pavement you know, uh, driving the machinery that helps them fix the road, using the tools and the jackhammers that help them fix the road. That's not women. Are there a few women in construction? Yeah, but they do ancillary jobs. They're usually like doing the bookkeeping or booking appointments or helping with accounting or they're holding a sign. They hold the little stupid sign that says slow or whatever, right? But all the heavy lifting literally is done by men. She gets to work. She turns on her computer at her little cubicle, at her little desk, all built by men. And the the corporation probably run by a man that she works for. Now, this woman has no problem submitting to her boss. If her boss is a man, if her paycheck's coming from the man, she'll do what he says, right? That's her boss. Uh, She will submit to a policeman who pulls her over. If she's speeding on the way to her cushy office job and she gets pulled over by a cop who's a man, she's going to obey him more than likely. If she's a lunatic who doesn't, she'll probably go to jail. But she's fine submitting to the police officer and what he tells her to do. If she goes to traffic court and there's a male judge and the male judge says, you got to pay this, she's going to pay it. She has no problem submitting to him. The only difference is if she's married and her husband says, look, I've looked at all the candidates and the policies and I've studied the economics and government and everything. And I think we should vote for this candidate. That's when, that's where we draw the line and we're not going to submit to no man. We're not going to listen to no man. Tell us what to do. Right. How is this logical? How is this rational? It's not. So why are women like this? It's because they hear over and over and over throughout their lives that to listen to their husband, to submit to their husband is slavery, it's abuse, it means they're weak and incompetent, it means they can't do anything themselves, right? But like I said, they submit to men all throughout society in other ways, judges, policemen, bosses, you know, uh, just when they go get their car fixed nine out of 10 times, whatever the mechanic says needs to be fixed, she's gonna go, okay, whatever you say, and I'll just pay it. So it's not that they have a problem submitting to a man. It's that they're programmed that submitting to your husband is somehow this bad, abusive, awful thing. It means you're weak willed and all this other shit, but they never think about all the other things I just mentioned. Right. But this woman, of course, she's saying, well, women don't contribute enough to society. So we can't vote. No, no, no. Yeah, we contribute to society. I'm contributing to society right now by helping to um, deprogram some of the insanity, break some of the programming, try to help y'all out. Uh, And I raised five kids. I wrote a book. Uh, I'm a firearms instructor. I can do stuff. Yeah, I'm a competent, intelligent, capable woman. Yes, I am. However, however, That doesn't mean I'm the same as a man. That doesn't mean that I can do everything a man can do in his capacity. I'm not going to be out there defending the borders. You know, uh, who are border enforcement agents? Like the ones that have to go and like tussle with, you know, drug drug mules and, uh, you know, Mexican cartel members, things like that. That's men. There's not women out there, you know, having shootouts with Mexican cartels on the border. They're not. They're not um, doing all the like 
defending of the nation, like I said, when it comes to the hard stuff. The fact that a woman can like do some secretary work in the army or, uh, you know, have a low level police position or, or something like that. That's not defense of the nation. They're not building it. They're not maintaining it. They're not defending it. And when it comes down to it, when this technical, this technological facade comes down that makes women think they're equal, nobody's a feminist. So imagine this, imagine an EMP hits tomorrow. The power grid goes out completely. You have no cell phone service. You have no electricity. That means you don't have water. The thing, the mechanism that pumps your water ain't going to work. The water treatment plant ain't going to work. Okay. Your cell phone, you're not going to even be able to get news. You're not going to be able to call loved ones. You're not going to be able to do anything because cell phone systems are down. You've got nothing. Uh, the modern women, woman today can barely like get across town to the 7-Eleven without her GPS telling her how to do it. So if they really thought through what life would be like if all this technology disappeared, nobody would be a feminist. There's a, a very good reason feminism didn't take off until after the first industrial revolution when things began to be mechanized, when we had printing presses, when we had at least like, you know, gas lit lamps and things like that. We had uh, mechanized factories. We had some level of technological advancement. That's when it really began. And it didn't even take off until there was electricity in every household. That's when 1920s, 1930s, when you started to have most homes having electrical power to them, and it made life easy for women. That's when it became possible to give them this false illusion that they're the same as a man. They can do anything a man can do. Men and women are equal. <clears throat> but of course, as I just explained, that's an illusion. It's just an illusion provided to you by modern technology. It's not real, okay? That could disappear at any minute. Now, people in the West don't think that, that things change. I am told this all the time. Oh, that's not gonna happen, Rachel. That's, this isn't gonna happen, that's not gonna happen. They think nothing's gonna happen. This is why people need to know history. This is why I love history and I study it all the time. You guys know that that's like my perspective of where I come from is studying the history because the past is the best predictor of the future. There's a very good chance that at least for short periods, you're going to have technological resets. It's happened before. It'll probably happen again. We've had times like this. Um, World War II. OK, uh, feminist, there's a reason that we had a big wave of feminism in the 20s and 30s. The Roaring 20s was really like the first sexual revolution where feminism started to really take off. It stopped. It put a big pause on that. All the gay rights stuff, all the feminism stuff. It was really getting popular and picking up steam in the United States and in Europe, especially Germany and the coastal cities where it's popular now. That stuff was taken off like crazy in the 20s and 30s. World War II starts, it kicks off big time, puts a huge pause on all those social movements because when there's shortages of food, shortages of fuel, um, things are getting scarce, you're facing like a mortal threat from without your society, nobody's a feminist. Suddenly the social activism just kind of disappears until people get really comfortable again and then we can go back to arguing over what is a woman and um gay rights and all this stuff right so to think that it's not possible that we could have a technological breakdown of some kind even if it was temporary i'm telling you if we had an emp and the grid went down if there was a cyber attack and the grid went down even for a week the amount of people who would die from that would blow your mind the vast majority of people in this country don't have a week's worth of food on hand. They don't have emergency supplies. They don't have a plan of what they would do in an emergency. They don't have backup water supply. Uh, they don't have the slightest idea about the most basic medical first aid kind of things. Think of all the people who are on prescription medications just to stay alive. Think of all the people who, if they couldn't go get their prescription, would die. It's a lot you would see mass casualties if this grid ever went down even for just a week. So 
the, this is all an illusion. When women think this, when they're like, but we're contributing, we're contributing, we help, we're helping. They're like the kid from the Simpsons. Remember the kid, the nose picker kid from the Simpsons who's like, I'm helping. That's what modern women are. They're, they're like, but I'm helping though. So we kind of addressed that point. Here's the other point about voting. Uh, again, people don't know their history. <laughs> they don't know that this country was not founded with universal democracy. And this is where people don't understand what I'm saying. If I say women shouldn't vote, I don't mean only women. I mean, most people, most people shouldn't vote. The ancient Greeks knew that universal democracy didn't work and that all it would be would be a cover for like a shadow oligarchy, for a deep state, for a technocracy, right? Which is exactly what we've got. That's why the elites wanted women's suffrage. That's why they wanted universal suffrage. The Republic was not set up that way. It was supposed to be very limited suffrage, representative government, but with limited suffrage. Why? Well, because if you let one person, one vote happen, all you're doing is basically bribing the masses to rob, you know, the top 20, 30 percent of people who are working, making a living, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's the same thing with women. We give women this illusion that they don't need a man. They're exactly like men. They can do everything a man can do. Uh, and they want, you know, they didn't want the vote. You guys have probably heard me talk about that a lot. So I won't like do my whole spiel about women not wanting the vote just yet. But uh, even when they get the vote, here's what happened. Here's what happened with suffrage. When they first passed it in 1920, most women didn't vote. Shocking. I know they didn't run out to they weren't like, oh, thank God, finally, my life dream has come true. And I can do the one thing I've always wanted to do vote in an election. Uh, surprisingly, they didn't care. <laughs> and they didn't really show up to the polls in huge numbers. For a while, it started to slowly climb as they pushed more feminism, as they broke up families. Women didn't even really see a need. They were like, "That's I'm going to let my husband like deal with that. I don't want to. Politics was like dirty. It was like a dirty business. It was kind of beneath most women who wanted to be ladylike. And so they just didn't care. They weren't interested in politics. And they're very busy with their own sphere, their family, their children, their church, their community, they were very busy with that. And they were like, let the men deal with like, you know, the politics stuff. Slowly over time, women did start coming out to the polls, more propaganda works. It's very effective. It wasn't until the 80s that the majority of voters became women. Now we have higher voter turnout with women than we do with men. Now here's the catch. Here's the thing, right? If you love democracy, if you're a democracy enjoyer, I'm not. But let's say you are. These women, the 61 people who quote tweeted me with moral outrage, can't believe I would say such crazy things. Of course women should vote. Okay, why? Because my democracy, everybody should have a say. I'm contributing to society and therefore I should have a say. Okay, hold that thought for a minute. If that's what you think, if you value the democratic process and you value the will of the people and the one person, one vote, all that stuff, the last thing you want is women voting. And here's why. Women, we have tons of data on this, which I can like do a different stream sometime where maybe we screen share and go over data and things like that. But for now, I just wanted to say women vote for safety and security. The reason we have a giant welfare state is because of female voters. The reason that we had something like the Patriot Act passed was because women voters. Women are scared when uh, terrorists come and attack their country and they will pass whatever safety measures they think are going to protect them and their children. That's a good thing in women. You want that, right? You want the mother of your children to be safety and security oriented. That's good. Not so good when you're trying to defend a nation or run a country. And here's why. Uh, we saw this in 2020 with a certain thing that happened. Who were the people who were really behind pushing certain measures to protect the public against um, a certain perceived threat? It was women. By and large, women. Are there liberal men now? Are there low-T liberal men who go along with this? Yes. Uh, that's kind of how feminism got going. There was 
simps, basically, the simps of the Victorian era helping to push through women's suffrage. And they wanted it for reasons of uh, these men don't tend to compete well in the hierarchy, even the wealthier ones. If you think of like the industrial age guys, like the Rockefellers, the Carnegie's, the Mellon family, um, the Vanderbilt family. And then you think of now we've got like Bill Gates and we've got, a, you know, some of the like the Apple guys and the different Google guys they're they all look the same they've all got the soy man body the, the four eyes they're kind of dorky a lot of them are bald they're not going to be at the top of the hierarchy unless they subvert it right they're not the masculine Chad kind of dudes who are going to get all the ladies and pass on their genes they have to have a strategy a mating strategy a survival strategy to try to topple that hierarchy or climb that hierarchy. So you're always going to get the simps, the like autistic, intelligent, soy simp guys <laughs> backing feminism, voting with women, being liberals, essentially being progressives. So <laughs> the problem with it is if you value your democracy so much within a century of women voting, we don't really have a democracy anymore. We don't really have freedom. We don't really have liberty. The government can come in and just lock everything down. They can tell you you're not allowed to open your business. You can't open your church. You can't leave your house. They couldn't do that. That would have never happened without the female vote. You would not have gay mayors, uh, you know, high level gay couples in government adopting children, all of that kind of stuff without the women's vote. If you look at any of those candidates, look at the, um, who's the gay break dancing mayor, Fry, Frey, F-R-E-Y is his name. Uh, if you look at polling data for people like him or who's the little mad TV guy, who's our Department of Transportation head now, Pete Buttigieg. If you look at these kinds of candidates or Obama, Barack Obama, huge support from the female vote. Women voters love this kind of crap. Why? Because they want fairness. They want safety. They want security. They want everyone to be nice. You have to be nice. You can't exclude people because it hurts their feelings, right? With this mentality, if you put those kind of people and that mentality in charge, you won't have democracy. You'll have no liberty. You'll have no freedom. You'll have tyranny in less than a century, which is exactly what we've got. And it's because of women voting. And it's, I mean, universal suffrage in general, taking people who, you know, are not net zero tax contributors, people who take more out of the tax system than they put in, people who don't own any land or pay any uh, taxes for like their millage taxes, school taxes, property taxes, but their kids are all going to the public schools, which are paid for by people who do own property and pay more taxes, things like that. So there's other problems, but I'm saying as far as like the social shift, the, the tyranny being ushered in, that's because women voters want safety and security. So the, you played yourselves, ladies, you played yourselves. You want democracy, you say, you want, you want the right to have your voice be heard. Well, you lost it because you voted in a bunch of tyrannical um, New World Order guys. So there's that. All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's go to the next uh, the next angry person. Aha, here we go. The Ohioan quote tweeted my tweet and said, "What Rachel is conveying here is the white Christian nationalist guide to wifing." Here we go again with this. I want to be clear. That's her prerogative because my freedom and democracy, right? She has to say, "Oh, well, I can't tell her she can't talk," uh, and then she said, "However." Read her twatty, twatty, snarky comments to people who challenge her. I'm so sick of these asshole people. Okay, so where she would ever get the idea that I'm a white nationalist, uh, white Christian national, whatever they, you know, they have their idea about what they think that means. I am, I guess I would describe myself as a Christian nationalist in the, in the way that Christians are my nation. They're my people. Um, but I, I, I only vote to double my husband's vote. I only vote to cancel the vote of a feminist somewhere, right? So I don't have like my own independent political ideology where I go out and, you know, 
cancel out my husband's vote or anything like that. I don't do a whole bunch of political commentary. I used to a bit when I was younger before I was on YouTube and I was just blabbing on Facebook. I have ideas and I have thoughts and I have opinions, but even I recognize that I'm not going to be the one whose life is going to be on the line at the end of the day. Just like we had a home invasion years ago where Andrew and I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of people rummaging through our basement. And he was the one that had to get the shotgun and go to the top of the stairs. Now I'm back behind him with a handgun in case, God forbid, they get through him. They then have to get through me to get to the kids. But that is the natural order. That is God's design. It is God's creation. Now, you might say, well, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in your Christian God, so I don't care about that. Well, even in nature, as I said, pagans, even Viking pagans, there's this idea that like Viking women were running everything. No, no. My shield maidens is greatly over exaggerated, but that's a stream for another time. In the natural order, even if you're a secularist evolution enjoyer, you should be able to recognize that men have the monopoly on physical force and they always will. That's why you're not the same. That's why you shouldn't be running the nation because it's not you who's going to go and defend the lives of your fellow countrymen from the enemy. You're not. And here's where we get into another one. There was somebody who said to me on Twitter that uh, women have guns now, so we are the same. Now, this is where you fucked up because I'm the gun lady, okay? I'm the firearms instructor. I do like shooting guns. I do have a lot of experience with them. Decade and a half. Uh, I teach women how to shoot. That's what, that's like my little side gig, several weekends out of the year with my dad, my dad and I, or my husband and I, sometimes just me by myself if, if it's a small class. Sometimes my 20 year old daughter actually comes in and helps. She does range safety stuff. She's an absolutely great shot, wonderful with a pistol. I'll tell you right now, we are not in danger of women taking over anything or uh, showing up the men in this area anytime soon. And I'll tell you why. I teach women how to shoot. Most of the women that come to my classes are terrified of guns. They need at least a couple private lessons just to get over the loud bang noise. Once you get them past the loud bang noise and their fear that if they touch it wrong, it's going to shoot their head off, then you have to try to find a handgun they can actually operate. Because most women, everyone's grip strength has declined a lot in the last century. Like even men's grip strength is less than half what it was 100 years ago. But women, like the average is like, I think they've got like 40 pounds of grip strength on average in one hand. They don't have the strength to properly operate just a basic semi-automatic pistol. I usually have to advise them to go get um, like a revolver or something that's modified that they can use, right? A lot of them cannot properly grip a pistol in order to operate it reliably. Now give them a shotgun and they, they just can't, they can't even hold the damn thing up, let alone fire it without knocking them backwards. And you have to like teach them how to stand. Now I can do all this stuff because I'm awesome, but the vast majority of women can't do it. This is why I don't like when I go shooting, I do it with guys because most of the girls don't know how. Now, if you're a woman watching and you do shoot and you're good, kudos to you. You're awesome. You're an outlier, though. We are outliers. The vast majority of women want nothing to do with guns. They think guns are scary. They think guns are bad. Again, you couldn't have gun control passing without women voters. That's another another thing, right? So, no, the women are not going to pick up guns and start defending the nation. The vast majority of them can't do shit with a gun. They certainly can't do hand-to-hand -hand combat. They're not going to be the ones uh, flying airplanes. The vast majority of airline pilots and especially uh, special um, armed forces pilots, all men. So don't come at me with that. <clears throat> They're not going to drive tanks. And everybody says, oh, there's drone technology. We don't have trench warfare anymore. Yeah. Even then, women don't want to learn how to use a drone to kill brown people somewhere. They just, it's not even so much that women can't, okay? That's kind of a separate argument. Can they? Can't they? Some of them can. Most of them can't. You don't even need to go there because women don't want to. This is the tough reality that, that you ladies don't want to accept. And 
if you look at the top 20 occupations held by women in 1920 when the vote passed, and you look at the top 20 occupations held by women now, they're almost exactly the same. They are bookkeeper, secretary, teacher, preschool, daycare worker, um, retail workers, uh, low-level management for offices, uh, things like that. Nursing, that's what women do for jobs. They're cooks, they're maids, they're doing the same stuff they did 100 years ago, and they're doing the same things that they used to do in the home. But now, <laughs> instead of having their husband be the person they submit to, uh, they submit to a boss at some kind of company or corporation, and they have to pay daycare so that they can have the privilege of going to do this important work. And then they also have to pay income tax and payroll tax on top of it. Again, we played ourselves, ladies. We played ourselves. We fell for it. It was all a giant scam. Okay, so, so that's kind of what I have to say about that. Um, these people who think I'm some kind of white nationalist, first of all, I'm a Christian. And I believe that every human being is an image bearer of God. I think there's differences in cultures and there's differences among people groups and that those should be respected and those are fine. I do not think that one group is superior to another group. And by the way, if you believe in white supremacy, go to your local Walmart and just look around and then get back to me. That's all I'll say about that. I'm just like, let's not get carried away, okay? I'm half Irish, half Dutch, but let's not pretend about any kind of like inherent supremacy. As if as if whites are even a monolith. But again, that's a whole different thing. So we, we covered the uh, Rachel is an evil racist because she tweeted about women's suffrage. Um, here's another one. What in the fuck did I just read? I mean, you can read it again if you didn't get it the first time. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, here's another great one. Here's another um, common thing that I get. Unworthy Hand says, good point, Rachel. You should probably stay home and not vote to honor the masculine sex that upholds and defends the country. Make sure to get as many of your friends as possible to do the same. Now, I already addressed this. I only vote to double my husband's vote and to cancel the vote of a feminist. It's kind of a two for one, right? I, I kind of double his vote and also cancel a feminist somewhere. It's pretty cool. Uh, but if somebody came to me, a, a genie came and visited me and said, I will grant you one wish that you've always had, which is that the women will stop voting. But that means you can't vote anymore, Rachel. I'm like, done. I'll take it. I will. I will take that deal any day. Ann Coulter used to say this back in the day. She would say, if giving up my vote meant that all the other women out there voting had to give up theirs as well, I would. Because these progressives, these liberals, these Democrats would never win another election. It would, it would blow your mind like how badly skewed it would be in the other direction. It, it, it would reset the Overton window to a point that you, you can't even conceive of because of our lifetime. So yeah, I would, yes, Mr. Unworthy Hand, this is a guy apparently. Um, yeah, I'll take your deal any day. If you can make that happen somehow, let's do it. Uh, here's another one. This is another one that you guys are going to love. Um, this is from Happy Hillespi. This person said, I do so love ballsy, manly women. Try to get a career going off the back of misogyny. So this is something that's in the thumbnail that I wanted to address. Now that I've got a few followers and I've done a few kind of higher profile shows, it, the criticism used to be, you ain't shit, you've never accomplished anything, you're a dumb housewife, uh, why would we listen to you, right? That used to be the criticism like a year or two ago. Now it's, well, here you are telling women to stay home and raise their kids while you have a, some huge career. First of all, no, I don't. There is a dono chat link if you want to support my work. I would love to take some money for all of the freaking time and effort I put in for trying to spread this message and trying to support it with research and historical facts and debating feminists to a, kind of make an example of them to the world of how stupid this is and that it's an idea that's time needs to die. This is a, a failed social experiment that needs to go away. If you'd like to donate, I will happily accept a donation because I've been working on this for years. I did two and a half research, 
two and a half years of research before I ever wrote the book. Didn't know if anyone would ever read it. I didn't even have an editor. I didn't have a proofreader. I just sat down and started typing and cited everything um, out of mountains of like, I had notebooks stacked this high with all these different notes, things in my phone, put it together myself. And I honestly thought it would be cool someday if my daughters read this and like maybe my dad will read it. But I'll put it up on Amazon because you never know. Like maybe someone wants to read about, you know, occult feminism. Much to my shock and surprise, it's done incredibly well. It has hit number one in the Audible, in Audible in its category, one of its categories or a couple of them. And it's hit number one a couple times for the paperback in a couple different categories as well. It's it's usually in that top 20 or 30 in its categories. It's done really well. But you don't make a ton of money off of one book. If you have five or six books that are doing that, you could probably like support yourself okay on that. But it's it's like a little bit of extra money for, you know, kids' clothes and gymnastics is about all it is. That's what I make, okay? Off of my YouTube channel, it just got monetized like last couple weeks. You can become a member. You can send me a super thanks. And you can send me a super chat. You can also send me a dono chat. Now, I never said women can't make money. Like, that's the dumbest thing ever. It's so stupid that people think I say, hey, if you're a mom and you have kids, if you can, even if you have to sacrifice, if you can stay home with them as much as possible, do that. It's worth your time. Children are not a distraction from more important work. Children are the more important work. There's no more important work than your kids. And we have created a a society full of mentally ill retards, excuse my language, because we send mothers off to work and the kids go to the state daycare and the state school and that's how they're raised, okay? So yeah, I tell moms, I say, if you want to be a mom and you should be a mom, it's a great, wonderful thing to do, try your best to spend as much time with them as possible. I understand that we have a situation where because of feminism... Oh, it's really hard for a lot of people. It wasn't easy for us. Andrew had to work 60, 70 hours a week, and I still had to kind of work like a part-time from home thing. I used to be a hairstylist when I was younger, and I got really good at that. So I could do like some part-time stuff out of my house around the kid's schedule just to like give us a little extra grocery money, stuff like that. I am not saying women can't make money. I'm not saying women can't do anything. I'm not saying women can't leave their house. This is all baloney. And if you read the dang book, you'll see all of chapter two and three, I go over the historical record and how women have been allowed to have careers and own land and inherit property in a lot of places, in a lot of time periods. It varies a lot. History is long. We're talking thousands of years. So there's variances depending on the time and the culture. But through most places and most times, women were allowed to do a lot. The only reason you hear this women were oppressed, women were oppressed stuff is because according to the feminists who run women's studies departments, unless you can get abortion on demand and unless you can be a total 304 with impunity, you're oppressed. That's their definition. That's all they care about. They care about women being able to hoe around and have abortions. That's all they care about. Everything else a woman can do, even if a woman can inherit land and property and own a business and, you know, have her own money, all these things, they they don't care about that. So um, I've posted stuff numerous times and I'll do a stream about this soon, um, about why the laws were the way they were with banking and credit and financing, because it's something people cite all the time. And there was a person who did quote tweet me saying, oh, I suppose you should just give up your bank account then. If, if you don't believe in feminism, I guess you can't have a credit card or a bank account. <laughs> you better just hand your debit card over. And I said, well, first of all, I don't have my own bank accounts. I'm a married woman. We have joint accounts. There's no money that's my money that Andrew doesn't have access. There's no my money, his money. It's our money as a family. And he, as the man and the head of the household, has the final say in where the money goes. Now, we rarely fight about that because we have the same goals. We have the same things we want for our family. So for us, it really hasn't been an issue. 
I also respect the fact that he worked his balls off for 12, 13 years straight so that I could stay home when the kids were all little and didn't have to work much. The man is a saint, so I'm not going to fight him if he wants to like buy a new shotgun or something. Plus, I'll probably want to shoot it too. So we just don't have that issue. But the reason why women didn't own bank accounts in their own name and have credit in their own name, are you ready for this? Because they're never going to tell you this. You're never going to hear a feminist tell you this little tidbit. The reason is because women were not able to be held legally liable for any kind of debt or for supporting their family. Did you know that? I bet you didn't know that. In most states in the 1800s and the early 1900s, men were held liable for the support of the family and for all their wife's debt. So why would you give a woman a credit account in her own name if her husband is going to be the person left holding the bag if she runs up the account? Because he would be legally liable. So it makes total sense, but they never tell you that. They're never going to tell you that. They don't want you to know that. Um, and the, the fact of the matter is in the state of New York in the late 1800s, a woman could come into a marriage from a wealthy family. She could come in with an inheritance of a million dollars, which is a ton of money in that time. Marry a poor man because she thinks he's wonderful, right? And they get married and they have kids. Even though she has a million dollars, he had no right to the money. She had all the rights to the money and he was still legally liable for any debt she had and for material support of the family. If anything happened, if he was found to be a drunk or, you know, a lazy person who wouldn't work, she could go to the court and he would be held legally liable for that. But she didn't know that. So that's the reason. It wasn't because everybody hated women. Oh, we just hate them. So we're not going to give them a bank account or a credit card. No, it was because men had all the responsibility. So that's a continual problem when we're talking about women's supposed rights. We hear a lot about women's rights. We never hear about women's responsibility. We don't hear women being held responsible. We hear about what they ought to have, what they ought to be given. We never hear about what they ought to do for others, what they ought to be responsible for. Men have all the responsibility, but they can't have any authority mm -mm, because men are bad and they're mean and they might beat you and they'll abuse their authority. So they have to have all the responsibility with none of the authority. First of all, how's that going to work? How's that supposed to work? How can you give a person all the responsibility with no authority? There's a name for that. There's a word for that. What's the word when you have all the responsibility but no authority? Oh, yeah, slavery. That's what it's called. It's called slavery. So they're just out of left field, and they don't even know how out of pocket they are. They don't even know how wrong they are. Because, like I said, the history has been co-opted and gatekept. Everybody's under a false presupposition of what life was like for women, what gender relations were like prior to women's lib, all that stuff. Which is why, go get the book. There's tons of citations. I'm going to have to do a J. Dyer and show you all these citations. Multiple pages. I didn't just make stuff up. I, you can, if you don't believe me, you can check all the source material and find out where I came up with this stuff. It's not that hard. Um, so yeah, that's that. Let's see what else we got here. Do, do, do. Uh, okay. So yeah, the, the, a whole bunch of comments basically saying I'm a grifter, um, insinuating that I don't believe these things that I have jumped on a bandwagon because you guys might have noticed that this is a really hot topic right now. Everybody is covering the topic of sex relations between men and women. You can't even say gender anymore because that doesn't exist. It's a social construct. So I just say sex now, the sexes, which by the way, if you read all the old feminist material from prior to the 60s, it says sex, not gender anyway. All the old feminists would say the sexes. They did not say the genders. Um, the reason it's so popular is because our birth rates are in the toilet. The younger generation has no idea. Like the boys and the girls don't know how to talk to each other. I know this because I have daughters who are in their early 20s trying to date. It's a nightmare. <laughs> uh, nobody knows what to do anymore. So you have the red pill manosphere. You've got the dating podcasts like whatever and fresh and fit. You've got just pearly things who you might know 
I did a little collab with. I did um, an interview with her, which has not been released yet. It's still getting edited and it'll be posted at some point. And then we did a live stream together. And uh, she, <laughs> the thing about Pearl is she gets a really bad rap. Um, when I first started talking to her, I didn't know a lot about her personally. And because everybody says horrible things about me on the internet, right? You just heard somebody thinks I'm a white nationalist. I'm not. People think I'm a grifter or a misogynist or that I hate women. None of that is true. People think I'm a pseudo intellectual. I don't know anything. Uh, that's also not true. So people say bad, wrong things about me all the time. So when I started talking with her, I didn't like make a snap judgment. I've tried to not do that because the internet is just filled with people who say lies about each other, right? So I talked to her myself. Uh, we've had multiple phone conversations. We've texted each other. We've done shows together. And the thing about Pearl is she's 26 years old. She's very young. And for someone her age, she does a great job of articulating these problems. She is also abnormally rational and logical for a woman. She grew up an athlete, so maybe that has something to do with it. She understands like competition and reality because competing in athletics does help teach you that. Um, does she get everything right? No, but I certainly wasn't getting everything right when I was 26. Hell no. If me now would have met me at 26, I'd have slapped me. I'd have just been like, who is this idiot? And I'd have just smacked myself back into reality at 26. So she's doing fine. Uh, everybody likes to say, oh, why isn't she married? Well, guys, for one thing, she's six feet tall. <laughs> she's a six foot tall volleyball player. That shrinks the dating pool significantly. A lot of guys don't want to date a girl who's that tall. Um, she also is a product of the culture to an, an extent that she can't help, right? She's 26. What's she going to do? Just like go pick from this giant pool of trad men who want to date a 26 year old who's six feet tall. No. Um, so she's doing what she can. She wants to get married. She, she very much wants to find somebody and settle down and be a mom. She said she'd like to have four plus kids. I believe her. I don't see why she would just like lie to me about that. Um, and like I said, does she get every single thing right? No, but I certainly wasn't at her age. And she gets a lot right. She, there's a lot of things she says that I agree with. Um, there was somebody who left um, a comment that I will try to go to here um, about her. And I said I would address it because I wanted to address this. Um, boo, boo, boo. Let's see, sorry for the dead air. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, I think it was just like a, like a general critique of why does she say this or why does she say that? But let me see if I can find it. <laughs> oh, here we go. So this was from Demi8890, and she said, Pearl says that women should be high-value wives and stay at home, and that men should be the ones earning all the money. So why has she furthered her career by doing interviews? If she thinks women are worthless if we're not married by our 30s, why has she been single her entire life? Why doesn't she have a husband and kids? Pearl thinks divorce should be illegal, and you should have to stay with abusive partners, so are you going to tell your kids to pick people who hit them as well? Okay. Ton of wrong stuff. I have seen a bunch of Pearl's content at this point. I've read all her tweets. I've talked to her, like I said. You're asserting a bunch of wrong things based on clips or based on stuff you've seen out of context or the classic thing everyone does to me, which is she says something specific and you take it to a place that she's not talking about. So the first thing is uh, women should be high value wives and stay at home and men should be the ones earning all the money. Yes, I believe that. I agree with her. She's completely right. And the reason is most women are destined to be mothers. I think it's like not, not as many anymore, but historically it was like the vast majority of women have a baby because historically all you had to do was be fertile and you were going to have a baby, right? So yeah, I do think that in general, the men should work and the women should stay home and raise the kids. Yes, that there's a reason it was like that for all of history. And if you don't understand that, this probably isn't the channel for you, but she said, why is she furthering her career by doing interviews? So this is the thing, right? 
I have daughters that are 20 and 22. Now, we no longer have intergenerational homes where you have your grandparents, your parents, uh, maybe an aunt or uncle, either living in the same home or nearby in the same neighborhood or on the same chunk of property. That's not a thing anymore. We're so atomized, right? Um, so it's it used to be girls could stay home, live with mom and dad until they got married because the average woman got married at 20, 21 years old for most of history. Like I've looked at the stats extensively. Now the average woman doesn't get married till she's 31. So is that because women don't want to? Yeah, that's part of it. But even girls who want to are having a hard time finding guys who want to settle down that young. Men think they have to like go to college or build a career. You know, a lot of men want to be older before they get married. And because most women are promiscuous now, most, most, okay, less than 5% of women say they're virgins on their wedding night now. So most girls are having sex before they're ever married and they're just living with their boyfriends and stuff. What this does is it makes it very hard for girls who don't want to do that to find a guy. Because if you're a 20 year old guy and you're, how 20 year old guys are, it's very easy to find someone who will give it up without you having to marry her. So most men do. Most young men do that. So it makes it very hard to find someone and get married young. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying it's not common. It's not typical. It's not just as easy as going out and shooting fish in a barrel, right? So that's number one. Um, number two is if that's the case, let's say you're really trying to get married younger. And, and you don't find someone until you're 25 and then you date him for a year and then you get married. You're 26 before you get married and move in with your husband. So you've got, you graduate high school at 18. You don't move in with your husband till he's, till you're 26. What are you supposed to do for eight years? Live with your mom and dad, right? I don't like this situation. It's not what I advocate for, but it is the current state of things. So what should Pearl do? She lived at home with her parents until like, a year or two ago? I mean, she did. She went to Catholic school and just competed in sports and did live at home with her parents until really recently. But she was like, okay, I'm like 24. I should probably move out at some point. And she hadn't found anyone yet, not for lack of trying, but she hadn't found anyone who wanted to get married yet. So what else is she supposed to do? My, I have a daughter who's 22. She, her, she told me yesterday, my five-year plan is to find a great guy and get married and have kids. That's my my five year plan does not involve career goals, mom. That's not what I want. Like at 22, she wants to find the guy and have the kids. She's having a really hard time doing that. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. That's how it is. It's really tough to find a guy who just wants to get married and support you so you can stay home and have kids now because of what all the other girls are doing. So that's why Pearl is she has to work and support herself. And she found something she was kind of good at, which she tells the story on her YouTube channel. It's one of her most viewed videos saying, I kind of stumbled into this by accident. I was just trying things and figured out I was kind of good at it. And it just took off. It took off like right out from under her. And she does have a good work ethic. What else is she, what do you want her to do? Right? So there's that. And then this idea that she thinks divorce should be illegal and you should stay with abusive partners. That's not correct. She's very specific about this. She does think divorce should be illegal, as do I. Uh, it used to be that divorce was only permissible under very specific circumstances. The church, whether it's the Roman Catholic Church or the Orthodox Church and even most Protestant denominations until 100 years ago, it was divorce was a specific thing that was only for abuse, um, addiction, abandonment, like these few things, right? Now, when we say abuse, Pearl talks about this all the time. Women now think that telling them no is abuse. They think that not just giving them everything they want is abuse. Uh, we're t it has to be actual abuse is what we're trying to say. We're trying to say, if your husband says, no, you cannot spend a thousand dollars at the craft store. That's not in the budget. That's not abuse. If he says, no, we're not going to have an open marriage. That's not an abuse. If he says, no, you can't start an OnlyFans, that's not abuse. None of these things are abuse. Him saying something you don't like is not abuse. 
him going out with his friends more often than you would like is not abuse, but this is the kind of stuff women think is abuse. So Pearl does not think you should stay with somebody who's just beating the crap out of you, but that's far more rare than you think. Christina Hoff Summers, who is a feminist, but she's a, a more sane, like second waver. Uh, she has videos where she goes over these stats and says the stats you've heard about women being abused in marriages are baloney. It's, it's like one half of 1% of all women who visit the ER is for anything domestic related, but you'll hear statistics repeated that it's like half of women who visit the ER. So there's a huge understanding, misunderstanding about that. She's never said if a guy is just beating the crap out of you, you have to stay. Now she does say that in cases of infidelity, um, you should try to work it out if you have kids. And I agree with that too. I know, I know everyone's going to get mad. You're all going to get mad. Everyone's going to yell at me. But here's the thing. <sighs> I mean, marriage isn't easy and women cheat too. And when women have affairs and the man stays, everybody thinks that's great. Everybody says, good for him. He worked it through. Because they assume, well, she would only cheat if it was his fault. He must be doing something or not doing something, right? She's unhappy. She So she had to. So if the man stays when the woman has an affair, nobody bats an eye. If a man has an affair, everyone goes, girl, you got to leave him. You better leave him, girl. You got to You cannot put up with that. They start with all this chicken clucking, finger waving, head shaking stuff. I'm sorry, but if you have children, there's more to consider than your feelings. And I've been in this situation myself, so I'm not, I'm not Andrew. I was married once before. Everybody knows this. I've talked about it before. It's another one of the criticisms everyone likes to lob at me. Oh, but you're divorced. Yeah. Someday I'll talk about that, but he's still alive and I'm not going to like dox his business, but there was infidelity. It's extremely painful. It's one of the most hurtful things you can go through. Uh, it's a major deal. It's a huge betrayal. But that doesn't mean that you just take off necessarily. If it can be worked on, if there were things that led up to that, like, for instance, consider this. Just consider it, okay? About a third to one half of marriages are sexless. And that's not usually because of the man. It's a very common thing. Divorce lawyers say this all the time. Marriage therapists say this all the time. A lot of times a woman will get one or two kids out of a guy and then she closes up shop and things are not open anymore, right? And so the man is just like expected to deal with that while well, sometimes they have an affair. Now that's not all the time. There's plenty of cheating ass dog men out there that are doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. I understand that. If it's a repeated issue and you, this is why you should be in a church because you should have a priest, you should have a spiritual father to counsel both you and your husband if there's something like this going on and hopefully prevent it even. But we don't do that anymore. Uh, nobody has spiritual fathers or goes to church anymore. So uh, this is what happens. And you should try to work it out because that's still your kid's dad. And just divorcing him doesn't change that fact. It doesn't get him out of your life. It doesn't solve that problem. It creates just a new set of problems. And I'm speaking from experience. I'm almost 43 years old. So I know a thing or two about this, okay? Divorcing a man who cheats doesn't just fix all your problems. You still have that problem. And now you've got a new set of problems. Are there cases where you need to do that? Probably. But that's not why women are getting divorced. 70% of uh, divorces are initiated by the woman. And the vast majority of the time, women cite reasons like, I felt like my marriage was holding me back. Uh, I wasn't happy with my work-life balance. Or I just felt unfulfilled and needed to find myself. These are, I've looked at this data a lot too. And it's most of the time. Most of the time, that's why women want a divorce. It's the, I, I want to eat, pray, love, and go find myself. I want to feel sexy again. I want to find myself or pursue my career. That's usually what it is. It's usually just like a, I'm bored. I'm unfulfilled. I'm bored. Well, too bad. Too bad, Susie. Like you have children with this man. You have a family. You don't get to dissolve the family, uh, uproot the children's lives, crush the man's entire life because of your feelings. I do agree with her on that. And I will fight you. I will debate you. I will defend that because families are more important. 
than that kind of thing. If there's a million ways you can work out your fulfillment in a marriage and I can prove it. You want to hear how I can prove it? Okay. How many times have you guys see a woman that she gets a divorce, right? She's like, I had to leave him because I just, I lost myself. This is another one they say all the time. I lost myself in the relationship and I needed to find myself again. So she divorces the man. And what does she do? What do they all do? They lose a bunch of weight. They get in shape. They go on a self-improvement journey. I'm on my self-improvement journey, you guys. Uh, they go, you know, they they just try harder at everything in life because they've dumped the man. They're on their own now. And they're like, oh, shit, I better, like, hustle. So suddenly, and, and they want a new man. <laughs> they want to attract a new guy. So, you know, they'll get cosmetic surgery. They'll lose a bunch of weight. They'll get in shape. They'll start wearing their makeup. They'll start dressing nice and looking attractive. They'll do a whole makeover on themselves. And it's like, why didn't you do that? For the guy you were married to why was he not good enough for that uh because he ain't shit is usually the answer it's like oh because i she's tired of him or whatever i'm sorry but if you put that much effort in when you were married you'd have a great marriage and your kid's dad would still be around so that's all baloney i agree with her about that i don't think women should be able to get divorced for nothing i am against no fault divorce if i could snap my fingers, I would end it tomorrow. So there's that. Neither Pearl nor I are saying that men should be able to abuse you or beat you, but we're talking about actual abuse. We're not talking about this nonsense that women call abuse where it's like, well, he doesn't, I don't feel like he considers my feelings enough. Therefore he's emotionally abusive. That's nonsense. That's baloney. And I don't buy it for one second. So in cases of actual abuse, or if there's a safety threat to you and your kids, or if it's like repeated, repeated infidelity and it's causing like all kinds of horrible problems in the home and the kids have no peace. Those are issues where there's an exception and the church makes an exception. Those should be the times when maybe you get a divorce. The rest of it is nonsense. So I agree with her on that. So you can, by the way, if anybody's watching this, you disagree, you think I'm wrong, you think I'm a terrible person, I'm the worst ever, uh, hit me up on Twitter. You can email me. Um, that will be in the link tree. My email is always in there. Uh, I will debate you. I will debate anybody who wants to debate this. And I hope that someday a woman with actual arguments wants to debate me because that might actually be interesting. Um, and then she said, are you going to tell your kids to pick people who hit them? Pearl doesn't tell women, hey, women, go find a guy who will beat your ass. <laughs> like, she doesn't say that. You, like, if you want to make a point, don't do this. Don't straw man. Don't exaggerate to the point of absurdity because you don't make Pearl look bad. You make yourself look bad. Of course, neither Pearl nor I is going to advise anyone, much less our own daughters, to find a guy who's going to hit them. Neither of us have ever said that. You're full of shit. So maybe choose your words more carefully next time. Maybe take the emotions down a little bit and use your brain before you talk. You know, whatever you got to do. But this is silly. I'm not trying to be mean. I sound like Jay. I'm not trying to be mean. But I'm not. I'm not trying to be mean. I don't hate women. A large part of the reason I do all this stuff is because I don't hate women. Because I like women. Women are miserable. 25% of you are on psych drugs. And... On Twitter, when there's some crazy person, some crazy lady yelling at me and screaming and losing her mind and going off the deep end because of something I said, I ask them, I'm like, how many prescription psych drugs are you on? And a lot of times they're proud to tell me. They'll be like, oh, well, I'm on two or I'm on three because my mental health is important to me. And yes, I take care of my mental health. So if you want to judge me for that, I guess you're just an even bigger jerk than I thought. But it's like, okay. If you're so happy and you've got it all together and everything's great, why are so many of you needing anti-anxiety drugs, antidepressant drugs, ADHD drugs, all these different psych drugs just to function? You're not happy. I go over this data in my book as well, that women's well-being and happiness is at an all-time low. You are not doing okay. So a lot of the reason I do this is because I know that most of you ladies who get so upset with me are victims of programming and propaganda, and you can't help that, okay? 
just like the baby boomers were victims of propaganda because of the Cold War, you know, a lot of the things boomers think is Cold War propaganda programming. It's the same thing. I know that it's not your fault. But now that I'm here trying to explain, at least listen to what I'm saying, at least listen to the information and consider it. And if you can debunk me, if you can prove me wrong, if you can correct me, I'm open to correction. I'm open to uh, anybody presenting different arguments, different evidence, and I would change my mind if, if that was indicated. Hasn't happened yet. But if you think so, then let me know that. But this, it, like, coming unhinged and going off the deep end and calling me names and asserting that I'm a grifter and all these other things, you're kind of feeding into the exact stereotypes that I cite when I say women shouldn't be in charge of stuff, okay? So, like, if you want to make the case that women should be in charge of things and running stuff, try to be a little more rational, a little less emotional, a little less insane and unhinged. And, um, you know, you there wouldn't be this market for the things Pearl's saying, the things I'm saying. Tim Gordon and his wife, Stephanie, um, have written great books on, you know, patriarchy and traditional marriage and the case for that. Um, I'm working on the second book should be done by end of summer. It's going to be called The Case Against Feminism, and it's going to have my 15 best arguments with all the stats, all the data, all the citations, so that other people can take these arguments and articulate them and put the data out there. We've got to undo all of this false propaganda and programming that's out there. And that's what I'm here trying to do. So if you think I'm grifting, if you think I just at 42, <laughs> I mean, look at me, okay? Look, I'm just a normal looking lady, a normal mom. I'm not starting an OnlyFans. I'm not trying to be hot for you. I'm not trying to uh, get a bunch of attention. In fact, uh, for all the people who want my permission slip, my husband is the one who suggested I do this a few years ago. I was like, ah, the kids are getting older. Like three of them are already out of the house. Like what, you know, what should I start like orienting myself toward? And, you know, you start slowly building something so that you have purpose and direction when your kids grow up and have their own lives as they should. And Andrew's the one who suggested this. He felt like I was uniquely suited for doing this kind of thing. And he thought it would be a great help to society if I did. And I thought, well, okay, I'll give it a shot. I didn't know if anybody would care, but some people do care. And they certainly care about stuff like what Pearl is saying. Um, Jay Dyer and David Patrick Harry covered this. Some of the debates on the Crucible that we've done on this kind of topic have been the most wildly successful of the debates that we've had. So yeah, people care about this. Birth rates are in the toilet. The future of humanity is on the line and we have a major problem with the sexes right now. So yeah, it's a hot topic because I feel like I have a bunch of research and knowledge and perspective to share on it does not make me a grifter. If you look up the definition of what a grift is, it's a swindle. Now, I'm not swindling you. If you buy my book, you're getting what I advertise, okay? It's not a 500 page. It's a $20, $20 book, right? 170 pages or something. You get a book that has a lot of information. It's pretty dense. You get what you're paying for. That's not a swindle, so it's not a grift. Um, if you send me a dono chat or a super chat because you like watching my content, you're going, hey, I'm getting some value out of this. I think I'll send her five bucks, right? That's not a grift. <laughs> a grift is if I were cheating or swindling you out of something, or let's say I was a total fraud. Um, I was somebody who I'm 43 years old and I've never gotten married. I've never had kids. I'm a CEO of a corporation. Like a lot of the TPUSA ladies are actual grifters because they say some of the things I say, but then they're total career women. They're like 35 years old, not married, have no no inklings of getting married or having kids or any of that. But they're they're saying this stuff. So like maybe then you could you could like allege that if they're into their mid late 30s and they're still childless and single and boss ladies, okay, maybe that's a grift. I've spent the last 22 years raising kids. Nobody knew my name. I wasn't making any money. I wasn't selling any products. There was nothing. I was just going to Goodwill and trying to make ends meet while raising my kids. Okay. So there's no grift. Um, hope that answers some of that. 
Let me just check my notes and see if there's anything else I wanted to address. Um, oh, the last thing, the last thing. Uh, this idea that people love to hurl at me, it's one of my favorites. You wouldn't be able to speak publicly or write a book had it not been for the brave, courageous feminists who came before you and made it possible. This might be the biggest lie of all. And it again, if you buy the book, you will find out why. Uh, I cite historical examples of tons of women writing books for the last thousand years or so, right? Uh, we've had women rulers throughout history. We've had women business owners. Um, we've had queens who were like, some of them were, you know, pretty decent. Uh, but even beyond that, starting in like 1300s Italy, Christine de Pizan was like one of the most famous authors of her time. She wrote romance novels. She wrote stuff for the French royal court and got a salary, a very hefty salary for the time, supported her whole entire extended family off of her writing because her dad and husband died in a plague. Okay. So again, I'm not saying women can't make money. If my husband and my dad died in a plague and I had to write books to support like the whole rest of my family because all the men were dead, I would hope that people would support me and buy my book. These are these things are fine. I never have said women shouldn't talk. I do. I don't think women should um, teach or have any authority over men. I don't think women should be in government. I certainly don't think women should have any positions of clergy within the church. Uh, those things we can debate if you don't like those things, but that's, that's my position. Me writing a book is fine. Me deciding to get a job after my kids have grown up and moved out is fine, right? If I want to go be a nurse, now that all five of my children have been raised and that work has been done and the hay's in the barn, yeah, I can go have a job. My grandma, who's 97, after her kids grew up and moved out, she got a job as a hostess at a restaurant just because she wanted to be social and see people and just do something. And she made a little bit of side money from that. After she was done doing that, she volunteered. She, she volunteered from the time she was like 75 until two years ago when she turned 95. 20 years of volunteering for the church school charity, volunteering at her like little old folks community to do the treasury work and stuff. I'm not saying women should be chained to a stove and popping out babies with duct tape over their mouths. And you have to be just insane to think that. I've never said anything like that. So if women want to work before they're married and have kids, like they have since the beginning of time, that's fine. If women want to work because they're infertile or they can't find a guy to marry them and they want to have a career because, well, the family option's not open, that's fine. If a woman wants to work after her kids have grown up and moved, that's fine. The problem isn't women working outside of the home. The problem is mothers being pushed out of the home and, and then the kids have no mom. That's my issue, okay? So I hope that that clears things up. I hope that, uh, I, I doubt most of the people who want to yell at me on Twitter aren't probably going to watch this, but I hope some of them do because maybe this will like clear up some of the misunderstanding for them. So, all right, it's 9.05 and I have done my machine gun talking now for over an hour. Uh, sorry about that. If I may make your ears bleed. <laughs> I'm well aware of my tendency. To sorry about that. Um, let's see. Do we have any dono chats? Let's find out. Oh, Amptown One sent me $5. Thank you so much, Amptown One. You're awesome. She's always here supporting and we appreciate her a ton. Does anybody else like in the chat, do any of you guys have questions? Do any of you guys like want to say anything? Anybody have any, is there anything not clear? Do you have any comments? If you don't, um, that's fine. Uh, you can send a donor chat. You can send a super thanks. Uh, piss off the haters and give me my grift money. I would appreciate it. <laughs> the dono chat's pinned to the top of the chat. But um, yeah, let's see. Uh, somebody asked if my, they were like 97. Yeah, my grandma's a legend. There's actually an interview with my grandma right here on the channel where I ask her what she thinks about feminism and the current culture. It's pretty cool. So you should check that one out. Um, and then somebody else said old people who work live longer. Yeah. And grandma has always said 
that you shouldn't sit too long. My whole life I've heard her say, don't sit. She'd always say, get up and move, take a walk. She always took walks after meals, um, which now we know like that's super good for your blood sugar and all that. So, oh, Zen Shapiro says, Rachel, I don't believe anything you say because you are a woman. In response to believe all women, I have decided to believe no women. You know what? I really can't argue with that. Zen Shapiro is a fantastic debater. We have partnered up for some debates, so I would be a fool to try to debate him on that anyway. So Madison says she loves my stuff. Thank you so much, Madison. I thank all the based women who watch my stuff. It's been really white pilling to see the women who do follow me and think that what I'm doing is good. You guys give me hope. I totally appreciate you. In fact, like one of the coolest things about doing this that I didn't see was all the awesome women I've met. Like Zen Shapiro's wife, she's awesome. Super based, very cool lady, great mom. Um, very funny. Like she's a very smart, funny lady. I really like her. Um, Jamie Hanshaw was the last person I had on my channel. Very classy, graceful, very intelligent lady. Probably one of the leading experts in the world on, you know, mind controlled pop stars and like monarch programming and Hollywood propaganda, all that kind of stuff. She's amazing. Courtney Turner, another lady I've done multiple streams with. Uh, we collab on things all the time. She's incredible. She's like, she can do anything. <laughs> she, the woman works circles around me for sure. She's like just a really cool, really smart, really inspiring human. So I've met some women doing this that are the coolest. And that's been like the biggest blessing to me that I'm so grateful for. Like the ladies in my chat are awesome. Like Tatiana and Amp Town One and Madison and like so many of you ladies. I hope I don't forget your names, but I see you in the comments. I see you in the chat. I see you following my Twitter and you guys have great stuff to say. A lot of the women on my Twitter will, they'll come back with some great arguments too. And they're no dummies. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully that clears up some things on the question of whether I am a grifter, whether I hate women, um, and, you know, why Pearl and I are evil and why uh, patriarchal women are evil and we just want to hold everyone back. It's just, it's silly baloney. And we have to have some mercy on these women who say that because they are programmed and they don't know it. You know, how would they know? Most of them have never been exposed to anything other than feminism. So I come in and just like take a pickaxe to their programming and it's very uncomfortable. So I like, I do mostly have a lot of mercy on them for that reason. They just don't know. So um, yeah, Serena just said, I really don't understand anyone that marries someone who differs on such core values and therefore vote differently. Yeah, that that's what my tweet was. My tweet was just like, if you're going to cancel your man's vote, why did, why would he want to marry you? I'm not. Now, I know that the boomer generation and even my generation and millennials have all just accepted that, right? Men have just accepted the cucking. They're just like, well, my wife says I can't do stuff and my wife says that I have to do this. And like, they've just kind of accepted it. But it's kind of insane. Like, I, I don't understand why men would do that. Rachel, can you tell the story about when you debated my boomer mom and aunt at the same time? Oh. So we went to Zen's house for the his baptism of his whole family and his precious little baby, Frankie. And um, his mom and aunt were there. And they are from the boomer generation. And they, I always say the boomers have it the worst. They've been the most propagandized because they were in this little sliver of time where there was no alternative media. There was no internet. All you had was legacy media. You had TV, newspaper, and radio, and magazines just completely controlled, completely owned. In the book, I even talk about this. There was something called the Congress for Cultural Freedom and a CIA program called Operation Mockingbird, which meant that they had total control over the media, right? So these boomer women, <clears throat> they got shellacked with this feminist stuff. I mean, it, the... The programming was so hardcore that for them, when you say the stuff that I say, they just, they think you're insane. They just can't conceive of like what you're talking about because it goes against everything they've heard for 50, 60 years. 
So they were just like, they were very polite, very nice ladies. And Zen was kind of like, you should ask her about her book. It's a really good book. You know, he kind of like uh, got it going a little bit. And they were like, yeah, I, I have some questions, you know. So they, had, they were like, well, what are we supposed to do if a man is bad? You know, and this is usually the first question I'm asked. The first question I'm asked is, but what about bad men? If no feminism, what do we do about the bad men? Well, the first thing I ask them usually is, okay, let's say you marry a man and he's bad. He's actually abusive. He's bruising and beating you. <clears throat> Who do you go to about that? Do you go to other feminists? Do you go to women for protection if there's a bad man abusing you? Or do you go to good men? for protection from the bad man right so that kind of that kind of right off the bat kind of helps them be like oh guess i didn't think of that and then it kind of opens their mind to like maybe maybe i haven't thought about this and then with that little crack i can usually get in there and start breaking down all the other things and giving the argument so it was probably like i don't know zen how long was it three four hours it's just like this where i'm just doing my thing where i just rage spew all of my opinions and questions and arguments and information and i think that they i think that they thought about it i don't know if it has like uh taken root and if they've converted away from feminism i don't know zen will have to report back to us on how that's going but you know they've both had a bunch of failed relationships and they're older and they're single and they're lonely and it's not a good life right and so I was kind of trying to get them to rethink why that might be, you know, because of course women always go, well, it's just because all the men are terrible. It's just the men are all terrible, right? It can't be me. You're the common denominator in all of the failed relationships, but it couldn't be you, right? This is what most women think. It's because men are bad and men, they want men to just approve of everything they do, tell them yes to everything, uh cater to their every desire but the minute a man does that they're no longer attracted to him and they want a different guy and then the cycle repeats so uh yeah we just we had a really long conversation of me kind of chipping away at their programming and getting them to kind of try to think through things logically but that's very hard to do it's very hard with women um to get them to take their emotions out of it. Most women see everything through the prism of how it makes her feel, how it affects her. Women see the world through a self, a prism of themselves. You know, everything they see, all the data, all the sense data, all the information gets filtered through, how do I feel about it? How does it make me feel? How does this affect me? What does it mean for my life? Whereas men being more objective and more, um, thing oriented and rational and less people oriented and emotional men can usually like take in information a little better not always there's plenty of plenty of deluded men out there too on different issues but they are usually a little easier to like logically talk to and they can just assess the information apart from how it makes them feel um but with women that's really tough so i do understand why a lot of them struggle Oh, they're still very much MK Ultra. Darn. Well, the, this is honestly, this is part of the reason why I'm always telling women to debate me. And everybody thinks I'm like some kind of weirdo because I'm always like, debate me, bro. But the reason I want to debate is so that I have the opportunity to refute all of your silly stuff that you think and poke holes in all your logic. Like that clip of me and Nina debating that's on the Crucible Limited, I think it's up to like 150,000 views now because when you contrast Nina and her worldview with me and my worldview, it's just like blatantly obvious to the entire world, which is correct. Do you know what I mean? So the more of that I can do, I feel like that's the best way because not everyone's going to read the book. Not everyone's going to watch my show. Um, a lot of people will just see a tweet and go, wow, this lady is insane. And then like block me. So if I debate them, it gives me a chance to put forth all the arguments and the information and break down the programming and get people to think it's hard to get women to think they're so emotional. And that's why they're always targeted. 80% of consumer spending 
is controlled by women. So all the marketing companies, all of the psychological like warfare stuff is geared towards women. Women are by far easier to program and, and convince with propaganda than men. Men are just a little bit more rational and men are a little bit more skeptical usually. So, yeah. Um, let's see. I should probably go soon because Andrew's streaming and he's taking on a whole nother panel. He destroyed an entire panel of mentally challenged people last night. And I think he's going to do the same thing again today. Um, oh, Wicked Wally's in my chat. Hi, Wally. Hi, Moldy Apple. Hi, all of you wonderful people. You guys are so nice to come watch my watch me ramble. Um, I still remember when Twitter women couldn't decide if they hated me or Rachel Moore for a day. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Those are good times. Don't worry. They hate me more. I mean, they hate you too because you're an evil man. You're, but I, I trigger them because they, they're like, you're trying to take away our rights. And I'm like, yeah, first we'd have to talk about what rights are and where those come from. And then we'd have to talk about, uh, why you believe you're entitled to so many rights but no responsibilities and then we'd have to talk about how that's worked out for you because it hasn't gone very well right so i mean it's just silly but anyways um i will check the donut chat one more time just to see if anybody gave me more grift money <laughs> oh you guys did oh my goodness i, I i'm silly okay so Serena sent me $5 and said, thanks for all you do. Well, thank you for being here, Serena. Share my stuff with whoever you think might be willing to listen or whoever wants to argue. I'm, I'm fine with either. Moldy Apple sends me $11. Thank you, Moldy Apple, for the grift bucks. Um, and then Ella Fanny sent me $18 and said, it's trad or it's trendy. I could see that. I think I, I think I get you. I think I know what you mean there. Um, but yeah, everybody thinks that the trad wife thing is a trend. And I that irritates me so much. Because I'm like, I started the trad wife thing many years ago. Okay, I've been doing this. A, my oldest child is 22. Like, how was this a grift when they were all toddlers and I was breastfeeding two kids at the same time and like crying from lack of sleep? I want to know where the grift was at that point, okay? Because it does irritate me. It's kind of like blackface, right? When some of the TPUSA girls are like, I'm a trad wife. <laughs> I feel like they're putting on a me costume. And I'm like, no, this is 22 years of hardcore sacrifice. Like Zen knows because he's got a brand new baby. It's not that having one baby is terrible or having babies is terrible. I, I had five for a reason. It's great, but it isn't easy. It's very hard work. It's very hard work and you do sacrifice a lot. So it's like this idea that I'm just grifting. It's like, where's all my grift bucks? Where's all my grift money then? What, you know, like, why am I still um, going to Goodwill to buy myself church dresses if I'm just riding the wave of grift? Anyways, um, and then Elise sent me $5 too. And she said, thanks, Rachel. Thank you so much. I am so happy to see all these ladies watching me. I'm just so thrilled about that. I'll have to check my um, my stats because it used to be like 85% of my followers were men, but I feel like I've gotten a lot more ladies following me. Uh, I think there's a lot of women out there who are smart. We The good thing about women, we're intuitive. And a lot of you who haven't allowed yourselves to be so programmed can still follow your intuition and be like, I don't think things are exactly how they're supposed to be. I think something is off here, especially like when you become a mom. That's what happened to me. You become a mom and you go, why is the whole entire society set up to make motherhood as hard as possible? Like, I'm just trying to do what I'm biologically made to do. I'm trying to propagate the species. Why does it feel like I'm swimming against the whole current of society? You know, like, so a lot of women, I feel like they really do like intuitively go, what the hell is what? And so they look and then they start finding the things I find and they figure it out. There's plenty of women who are smart and do figure it out. And I feel like they follow me. So I love you guys. You're awesome. Uh, Tiamat Michelle Hart said, proof feminine, feminism is crazy. Housewifery is hard and unfulfilling. Also, housewifery is easy. Yes, exactly. You are so right. 
They do this crap all the time. They'll tell me, okay, so this is another favorite thing that the feminists do to me. They'll go, well, it's really nice for you that you are so privileged to be able to stay home with your children because not all of us have that privilege. Some of us have to work. And I'm like, oh, really? I thought you just got done telling me that feminism paved the way for women to have the careers they desperately wanted and go to college and like be bosses. I thought that I'm supposed to be grateful to them for creating this situation and pushing me into the workforce. And, th and then they don't know what to do because I'm like, it can't be both. It can't be that it's a blessing to have a career and that it's also a blessing to stay home and a curse to, you know, it's a curse to have to stay home, but it's also a blessing and a privilege. Like, which is it? Yeah, they, they contradict themselves all the time this way. So yeah, anyways, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And I will be back soon. Some super cool stuff is coming up, you guys. You don't like stay tuned to the channel and share it with people if you can, because I've got Professor Edward Dutton coming on to talk about his book, Witchcraft and the Fall of the West. Some super, really interesting, really fascinating data about the history of witches and feminists and, and what kind of people they are and how they came to be this way. Um, so that will be great. And then Tim Gordon and his wife, Stephanie Gordon, are going to be coming on. They are our based Roman Catholic friends who believe in patriarchy and Stephanie is very similar to me. She stays home. They've got the same like amount of kids. They homeschool their kids. I think they have mostly boys and I have mostly girls, but basically we've got the same situation going on. So we are going to do a little collab and talk about what we think about patriarchy and family and being a stay at home mom and homeschooling kids. Um, bunch of stuff, a bunch of guests coming up. So we're going to ramp up the channel a little bit now that it's got a little gas under it. So everybody stay tuned. Um, remember that you can become a channel member. I think I got a channel member today. Yeah, Shane Nolan. Thank you so much for becoming a channel member. I'm going to have some custom emojis um, by the end of the week. I just have to put them up. And you guys can send a dono chat anytime to the link. It will. I'll put all that in the description box. And you can do a super thanks if you like the stream. Share it with everybody, get the word out there so that we can hopefully affect the culture because it's not that I'm expecting that we're going to see feminism just die overnight. That's not what I'm expecting. But I feel like if there's just a hundred families that choose to have mom stay home and mom and dad stay married, like how, how what would the ripple effect be of just a hundred families choosing that? Then think, what if a thousand families choose that? What if a thousand families stay together and mom stays home to raise the kids instead of sending them to the deep state programming facility known as a public school? How would that affect the country? Just a thousand families. And then you could just extrapolate that out. So the more people that I can kind of convince to at least give this a shot, the more women that I can encourage, the more families I can encourage to stay together, we're going to save a lot of people's lives literally if we can do that so i think it's well worth the time i think it's a worthy cause and i think it's a pretty awesome grift if you know what i'm saying so thank you everybody for watching me and listening to me ramble and i will see you guys next time